started on the project that you are going to see right now with the Inspiring Iris stamp set. So I love this one. So you, you'll see, you can use the outline or you can just use the watercolor um, images. So you could stamp this and then stamp those two inside of there. Or in this case, I skipped this and I just stamped those two because I love how that looked because it's truly like, it's like a no line watercolor look. And I loved how that looked. I don't know if you can see, I put a little bit of texture. I use that, um, the subtle embossing folder. And then I have to show you, and it's funny because this, um, you pull it apart and I swear to, I really think it like shrinks back up a little bit after I put it on there, but I love pulling that apart because it looks, can you guys see? It looks like a little rug or a runner or something. So let me show you how we actually made. Okay, let's get these guys out. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put these right on the ink pads that I need them on. We'll put that one there. Okay, so let me give you dimensions first. I had somebody asking me the other day, what um, like card base sizes are. So listen right up so you know how to, obviously I made a tall card. So we're gonna cut, this is a full sheet of Coastal Cabana cardstock. So you'd pull this right out of your cardstock pack and along the eight and a half inch side, you're gonna cut it in the middle at four and a quarter inches, right? And then along the 11 inch side, you're gonna score it in half at five and a half inches. Super simple tall card base, right? It goes like this. You could even use it. I don't do that very often, but it's kind of fun. It's almost like a book or something, right? You could have it opening that way or opening that way. So we're going to do a tall one today, okay? Then we have another piece of Coastal Cabana cardstock, almost as big as our card base. So this one measures four and an eighth, so it's just an eighth of an inch shy of a full card base there, and then five and three eighths. Normally it's five and a half, we're gonna go five and three eighths. And that you're gonna see just layers right over top of that. Can you guys, I don't know if you can even see that, right? So just a teeny tiny little edge around there that's not covered, okay? All right, so let's do, what do we need? We're gonna do our embossing, but actually first, let's do our stamping. So we're gonna do this sending hugs, prayers, and lots of love which is part of right our Inspiring Iris stamp set, that sentiment right there. We also have other great sentiments. You are somebody who makes everybody feel like somebody. I think that's so cool. Wishing you the best and thanks. And then the beautiful Iris imagery. And I think I told you guys, right, that I planted some Iris bulbs from my brother-in-law's yard or garden. Um, well, back when it felt like spring, I guess I did that. Anyway, so I'm really, I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that we will see an iris or two pop up. I don't know, with the weather's been so weird. Things have started popping up. I don't know if they're all shriveling up because it's so cold. Okay, so this is my um, Grapefruit Grove ink pad on Whisper White cardstock. You saw that was just a quick, we've got sending hugs, prayers, and lots of love. Let's do our die cutting. We're gonna do, yeah, let's move these out of the way, our die cutting and our Ooh, I forgot my embossing stuff. Okay, I'll have to grab that in a sec. We'll do the die cutting first since we have this right here. Okay. So I have my magnetic platform, one very well-loved clear plate, not so clear. They start out looking like that, and then they end up looking like this after you use them a lot. You can see lots of etching happening in, in my plate. I have my layering oval dies. And I always put them back here so I don't have to try to remember which ones we are using. So these came from right here and here. Okay, so for a straight edge, we use the second smallest. And for the scallop edge, we also use the second smallest. Okay, so this is going to go on our white sentiment. And then this is going to go on our grapefruit grove piece. Okay, so... This is like backwards. I don't normally put my arm underneath here like that, but that's okay. So there we go. Mm, isn't that funny? Does that look straight? It's probably good enough. Okay, and then we need one more clear piece on top. We will do our die cutting. Okay. All right, so we've got that. I don't need that magnet platform next, do I? Okay, but you guys see, if you're new, this is kind of fun how, oops. I fling everything around. Easy, those things pop right out with the dies, right? And one of them fell on the floor. Let me grab that. 
I also need to grab my embossing plate so we can do our embossing there. One sec, I'll be right back. Actually, it wasn't my embossing plate. I needed, this is just the regular platform that comes with your die cutting machine. And then where's my box? Just, you can kind of see it just kind of creates, it's almost like a linen texture, which I thought was kind of fun because that designer series paper also has kind of a linen texture. And I realized I forgot to give you dimensions on those. I think I just told you about the card base and that was it. Okay, let's scoot those over there. All right, so we put our paper in our subtle embossing folder and we're just cranking it through and let's see what that looks like. Cause I think maybe you can see it a little bit better. Can you kind of see that subtle texture on there? Kind of get it in the light there. Very fun, I love, it just kind of adds just a little something, you know, without it being too much, just adds a little something to your project. Cause originally, I had laid these pieces just on here, and I, I did, I, it just needed a little something else. So when I added that piece that was embossed, it just kind of added a little something else. So while I'm thinking about it, let me give you dimensions. I cannot remember the name of this. This is one of our designer series papers that is in our annual catalog, and I will get you the name of it, but you can see it's that really pretty kind of linen look linen burlap look, and then there's the back side of that one. So this piece of designer series paper measures three inches by four inches, and then our whisper white piece that we're gonna do our stamping on measures two and three quarters by four inches, okay? So let's do our stamping on here after I grab another sip of water. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do I wanna start with? I think we're gonna do the kind of leaves and stems first. So this is Coastal Cabana ink. All right, so we're gonna nice easy, you guys see me tap, tap, tap. We are gonna press straight down. Then we are going to use the flowers. There's just something that's so pretty about these, okay? I think that's upside down, we're gonna go that way. So tap, tap, tap. And you can see that little piece needs to fit right inside there. And then that is going to kind of sit right on top of that one. Um, and you do kind of need to learn that because you don't have the outline to kind of match stuff up with, right? Because we're not using this outline. That kind of helped me originally, but then I've done it enough times that I know how to place it so that it fits on there very nicely okay i think we are ready to start putting some things together here so let's do that oops we're going to scoot these little babies out of the way okay so we're going to add some adhesive and because this is embossed i i do put a good amount of adhesive my snail is not running very well and i like to make sure it's in the four corners because i don't want those popping up when you have that texture on the paper it tends to not kind of stay down on your card base quite as well. So you wanna add quite a bit of adhesive and you wanna press really firmly to make sure that stays down. Back of these pieces. Okay, so here we go with our linen. I love this paper. It's really pretty floral too, so that one, I don't know. I'm not even gonna guess because I can't, I'll say the wrong name. Oh. And you know what is so funny? Just as I was like, oh, what's, I was thinking pressed petals, but I didn't want to say it. And then there's Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Yes, this is the pressed petals designer series paper. I love, you guys are always such good helpers for me. So thank you, Miss Sharon, for the info on that one. I didn't want to say it wrong, but then when I looked up and I saw Sharon said it's pressed petals. So this is how this comes, and what is this called? The braided burlap. Hey, Tammy, thank you for sharing. Glad you can join us. The braided burlap trim, right? So we're just gonna cut, and I'm just gonna cut it a little bit wider because once you start, so can you guys see? This is what I start with, right? And then that's what we're gonna end up with. So what I was starting to say was I feel like it kind of shrinks back up, and probably as I'm pulling it apart, um, it's kind of shrinking as I, you know, in the back that I've already done at the, the one end I've already done. So anyway, I just think like, isn't that so cool? And you can kind of pull it apart. You guys seeing that? You see like all the texture in there? I 
I just think this is such cool stuff, right? So it add, and I can play with this for a really long time, really long time, because it definitely does kind of shrink back together, but I feel like it shrunk back even more after I put it on the card. I don't know if that's possible or not. Oh, I forgot the other thing. Yeah, because I wanted to add. So this in crumb cake, woohoo, all right. Oh boy, ladies, let me see, okay. So now this is um, tip number one, is always do all your stamping before you adhere this whisper white piece onto your card so that if it doesn't go well, you can flip it over and stamp it again. So we have opted to not do that. So let's just hope and pray that I can do what I want. I think I'm gonna be okay. Yeah, okay, that worked. That little, I don't even know what a little scroll work. And then this is just gonna kind of go down right about there, right? Okay, so look, I feel like it's already shrunk up. I want to keep pulling on it. So sorry, I could do this for a long time. You guys are like, okay, I think it's almost going to be easiest. Ooh, excuse me. Boy, okay, hold on. I don't know if I mess things up. Let's see about there. Is that going to help us? Sorry, did not mean to bonk that. Um, I'm going to, instead of putting them on to my burlap, I'm just, oops, well, I was gonna put it on the card. That was the plan. So I'm just gonna lay a couple of these down. I probably could put it on the burlap, but we're gonna try this and see what do we think about this. Because I'm gonna fess up, ladies. The one that I originally made, I used my Fast Fuse, but because we don't technically have that for sale anymore, I don't wanna tease you guys with it, but that's gonna work. But look at that. Isn't that funny how it shrunk back up? Anyway, it's still very cool, right? So then last couple of steps, actually. A lot of scissors out here. We are going to just put a little bit of adhesive on our sentiment, okay? And because I don't like when things um, are uneven, I'm only going to put dimensionals up at the top and then I'm going to add a little bit of snail because this piece is going to go right on there and it's um, going to go on that burlap too. Okay, so this is going to work. Here we go. All right, that's going to go right there, right? And then last step, wiring. Um, I can tell you that already. I'm just positive because some of these dots are our in colors. So this is Pineapple Punch, that color is retiring. This is Lovely Lipstick, that color is retiring. And this is Call Me Clover. I am using these as if they're Grapefruit Grove, but I think they actually say they're Calypso Coral. And then these are Night of Navy. So can you kind of see, you get five different colors in three different sizes. There's like a small, medium, and large. They're all small, but you kind of get the idea there, right? Okay, so we are just gonna peel up a couple of these little babies and we are gonna kind of sprinkle them on our card. So I have two really small ones right there. I did a large one right there and kind of a medium size one right there. Okay, so there we go. Sending hugs, prayers, and lots of love. That'd be a good card to send to someone at this time.